Okay, let's put a bit of mathematical notation onto what you already discussed. And so we'll start with a limited domain. So let's say that there is a staircase which has uh, 10 steps. 10, 9, all the way down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And there's a floor and there's a wall here. And uh, we won't draw the person anymore. Uh, my drawing skills are not that great to begin with. Um, and we'll denote each step with the value s. And now uh, we talked about the fact that at a particular point in time, we don't know where the person is. We just know uh, they're at some step with some distribution. And so let's say that we use a random variable x to denote the location of the person. So uh, you should recall that a random variable such as x is one that has a distribution over some domain. So it has a distribution of probabilities over a domain. So for example, in this case, the domain is the steps, which go from 1 to 2 all the way to 10. So. And so what we have is we don't know what x is exactly, but we know the probability that x equals 1 equals, let's say, 0 0.2. And we interpret this as meaning the probability that the random variable x takes on the value 1 is 0 0.2. Similarly, the probability that x equals 2 may be equal to 0 0.1, etc. And so at any point in time, what we know is that this variable, random variable x, is going to take some value from the domain. That is, it's going to be on some value from those steps. Now, uh, recall that we had said that a stochastic process is a family of random variables indexed by time. So instead of using x, we'll use x sub i, and where i is the time, or time step. So again, as before, we can say the probability that x sub i equals 1 equals 0 0.2. We can interpret this as saying that at time step i, the random variable x sub i takes on the value 1 with probability 0 0.2. And of course, all the probabilities uh, uh, across the values of the domain must sum up to 1 because the random variable is going to take some value in this range from 0 to 1. Um, OK, so now we can say a little bit more about the rules. So the rules are like this for moving up and down. We say that uh, your probability of going from step s to step s plus 1 is equal to 0 0.5. The probability of going from s to s minus 1 equals 0 0.5. And this is going to be true for s less than uh, 1 less than equal to s less than 10. And it's going to be s to s minus 1 for 1 less than uh, s less than equal to 10. And then the probability of going, when you're at the first step, you can't go down. So the second rule doesn't apply. And when, when you're at 10, you can't go up. But the first rule doesn't apply. And so we can just say that the probability of being at 10 to go to 10 again is equal to uh, 0 0.5. And probability of being at 1, you stay at 1 with probability 0 0.5, something like that. So you, you have some boundary conditions of where you're going to be so that you don't run out of steps over here. Um, OK, so uh, what we have now is that uh, if you're at a particular step, you're going to go up or down over here. So then we can actually start writing down the notation of what happens at each point in time. So let's say that we know at time 0, at time step 0, uh, x equals 2. It's on the second step. So we can write this down as this. Uh, x0 is defined as, or is given by, probability x0 equals 2 equals 1. And that's the distribution of the uh, of this of this random variable, and we can uh, we can also write it down either in the graphical form I showed earlier or in this form where we say zero one zero zero, which is an, a vector of ten values, 
where the first value is zero because and the second value is one, it means that it's for sure the person is at step number two. That's shown by this vector over here. Uh, what about x1? x1, we can find it out like this. So uh, x1 is given by this distribution. Well, the pro probability that x1 equals 1 is going to be 0 0.5. And the probability that x1 equals 3 is going to be 0 0.5. And the rest of the values are 0. And you can write this down as the vector 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5. And then the rest are all zeros. So again, it's a vector where all the numbers uh, values add up to 1. And in this fashion, we can compute the probability of x2 and so on and so forth using these same rules of computation, these rules over here that I showed, which shows how to compute the distributions over time. And as you can see, we now get a nice series of random variables, x0, x1, x2, etc., xi, where these are linked or indexed by the value i, which is going to be the values uh, at the time. So this clearly, this is therefore a stochastic process. Okay, um, what is moving over here? What is moving? What's actually happening? Uh, we really don't actually have a person who's moving. Uh, what we have instead is that we can think of the stochastic process as having a particular state. And a state is the value assumed by the random variable. So to be more precise, the state at time uh, i is the value assumed a random variable x sub i. It's the value. It's not a probability, right? So to be very precise about this, let us say that the person went from step 1 to step 2 to 3 to 2 to 4 to 3 to 4, 5, 6, 5, etc. OK? How can we draw it on a graph? So we can draw a graph like this, where on the x-axis we have time, on the y-axis we have the state, and again we have discrete values of time, and we're going from you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we go from 1 to 2 to 3 to 2. Well, you can't do that. You have to go to a 3 first. So, okay, go to 3, and then you get to 4, 3, etc. So, we can think of some path shown by these, x, uh, these little x's over here. But what I want to focus on is the fact that at a particular point in time, let's say this point in time, the past is known. The past is completely known, but the future is known only probabilistically. The future, we don't know for sure what it's going to be, and we can draw sort of these potential paths that could be taken over here, uh, but the path is fully known. So the path that is known is called a trajectory or a sample path. And what we're saying is that the stochastic process takes on a particular sample path or trajectory over time. And looking backwards, into, we can know exactly what path was taken by the, by the stochastic process. But about the future, we can only make forecasts about the distribution of the corresponding random variables. So uh, more specifically, the rule that we use for the stochastic process, this is the rule over here. The rule set is deterministic. The rule is deterministic, but the path is stochastic. And so. Uh, if you understand this, then you have a pretty good understanding of what a stochastic process is, as well as the notation that we will use over here uh, in order to denote uh, stochastic processes.